Representatives of Delaware is joining us. He's a key member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. All right, so listen to what uh, Trump's uh, senior economic advisor, Stephen Moore, uh, said about uh, Donald Trump's phone call with the president of Taiwan. Taiwan is our ally, John. He, that is a co uh, country that we have backed because they believe in freedom, and we ought to back our ally. And if China doesn't like it, screw them. Screw them. All right, so I want to get your reaction to that. You're on the Foreign Relations Committee. What are the possible repercussions? Well, Wolf, this is an area where clumsiness can lead to real conflict, uh, where a casual and careless Twitter war could conceivably lead to a real war. China is a very important country, uh, and Donald Trump made it clear that he may well pick a fight with them on international trade, on our trade balance, and on America's business interests. And that may be well and good, and he may need to stand up to China on some issues. But we also need Chinese cooperation in order to rein in North Korea's very dangerous nuclear weapons program. So why on earth Donald Trump, the president-elect, would pick this fight pick a fight with the People's Republic of China uh, over this 40-year-long, carefully balanced relationship where we provide defense materials to Taiwan, but we do not recognize Taiwan. Why he would pick this fight by accepting a call from the president of Taiwan uh, puzzles me and I think deeply concerns many of us in the Foreign Relations Committee and in the Foreign Relations Community. Recent reports that President-elect Trump didn't consult experts in the State Department and that this call may have been put together pretty quickly suggests that he is being a little too casual about one of the most vital strategic challenges we face in years ahead. Clearly this is a break with almost 40 years of diplomatic protocol, Senator, but uh, the Chinese president speaks directly with the Taiwanese president. They speak on the phone. Uh, why is it okay for them to speak, but not okay for a president-elect of the United States to simply take a courtesy call, a, congratula a congratulatory call from the president of Taiwan? Well, that's a fair question, Wolf, and let me put it to you this way. Um, this is a long-standing, simmering conflict uh, where the Chinese feel very strongly about it. It's one of their core interests. And we've reached a, a way of living together around this conflict, reinserting ourselves into the conflict between the People's Republic of China uh, and uh, Taiwan. Um, strikes me as foolishly picking a fight here that is unnecessary. Um, it is something that the president-elect can elect to do. Um, he can choose to elevate uh, our role in the China-Taiwan conflict, uh, but it's going to have costs, and it's going to make it harder for us to get any sort of cooperation from China on reining in North Korea's nuclear weapons program or in working together in other areas of security and cooperation that deeply matter to us. I think he made it clear to the American people he was going to pick some sort of a fight with China over trade. Why he's choosing this one instead, I frankly don't understand. This is a sensitive issue clearly for China, but why should the United States let China dictate the U.S.-Taiwan relationship? Uh, uh, Taiwan, a country uh, what with about uh, 20 million people, increasingly democratic. They, they have free elections right now. There's a woman who's the president of Taiwan. If the uh, president or a president-elect of the United States wants to speak with her, why not? Well, Wolf, you raise a good point. Why should we let China, the People's Republic of China, dictate our Taiwan policy? They don't dictate it. This is a matter of costs. What are the costs we're willing to bear? So we've got this roughly 40-year-old policy where we provide defense equipment. Uh, we have lots of uh, relations and communications with Taiwan, but we don't officially recognize them. Our president doesn't communicate with their elected leader. There will be cost to this. It will aggravate the Chinese and it will elevate this particular conflict. That's a choice that President-elect Trump can make, but I don't think it's a very wise choice. We've got many other conflicts around the world and we've got many other issues where we will be in conflict with the Chinese. Could, so it just doesn't make sense to me why he's picking this fight. Could this actually give the U.S. some serious leverage in dealing with China? There are economic issues, as, as we all know, military-related defense issues. Could this strengthen the U.S. bargaining position by, by simply accepting this phone call? Well, it'll certainly um, raise the temperature in the room. And uh, if what Trump is trying to signal is that he's willing to shatter long-held conventions, um, that will have repercussions outside just this conflict as well, Wolf. In the course of his campaign, he said things about retreating from NATO, about reconsidering our nuclear umbrella protection of South Korea and Japan. So there will be secondary consequences to picking this fight with China because he may also unsettle some other uh, long-standing allies in terms of their reliability 
uh, the, their sense of whether or not they can take him at his word and whether or not he's going to shake up very long-standing American alliances and positions on difficult and divisive issues around the world. Here, here's a point that I've uh, received, I've heard from uh, some of uh, Donald Trump's national security uh, people, uh, his, their, his advisors. They make the point, uh, the, the president of the United States, President Obama, he broke, what, 40 years of diplomatic protocol, picked up the phone and called President Rouhani of Iran, Iran, right. uh, according to the State Department, the, the leading state sponsor of terror. He broke 50 or 60 or 70 years of diplomatic protocol and established diplomatic relations with Cuba, even though Castro, uh, Raul Castro, is still in charge. Uh, a president could do that, right? That's right. And all I'm trying to point out, Wolf, is that making bold moves like that have risks and have consequences. Uh, President Obama's uh, opening to Cuba, President Obama's engagement with Iran has had consequences in terms of our relations with other countries and allies in the Persian Gulf and in the Middle East and with other partners and allies in the Western Hemisphere. So choosing this particular fight, uh, choosing to elevate uh, the centrality of the China-Taiwan fight at a time when there are so many other conflicts in the world is somewhat puzzling, but it certainly is the prerogative of the president-elect. Yeah. I just hope that he is relying on the advice, not just of his current close circle of political advisors, but on those career independent professionals in the intelligence community and the State Department who advise every president, yeah. regardless of partisan concerns. Those are all serious points, of course. We're going to take a quick break, but the point they make is uh, the president, President Obama, he, he broke diplomatic protocol in speaking with tyrants, if you will. In this particular case, Donald Trump broke diplomatic protocol in speaking with a democratically elected president of, right. of Taiwan. All right, stay with us, Senator. There's more information coming in. We'll continue all of this right after a quick break.